Okay, this is a quick video to show um, the new teachers in the school how to use Google Drive and Google Classroom. Um, we'll touch upon uh, docs and sheets and slides as well, but essentially this is the, the first part of a two-part video um, on Google Drive. So, um, you're new to the school, you've been given your email address, you go to Google, you can use any browser you like. Um, in this situation I'm using Safari, but you can use any browser you like. You log into Google, right? So you go to the top right hand corner, click in, log into Google, and then you come up with these nine square dots. So if you click on the right nine square dots, you'll get this drop down, and it has lots of different things in here that you can use. Now, we're going to look at Drive first. This is going to be our, the first thing we, we uh, focus on, just here. Um, sometimes this icon is not always there. Sometimes the icon will be further down the page. So it might be down here somewhere. Um, See, see my classroom is down here further as well so um, there are different locations I've got a version of classroom there too so uh, what you're looking for is drive you click on drive and this will automatically start up for you um, as part of the school you've been being set up so that you can have a Google Drive um, and over here on the left hand side you'll see here my drive so my drive essentially is the same as the hard drive on your computer it's a place where you can store your documents um, any type of document, photos, uh, written work, slideshows, whatever you like, movies, any of that sort of stuff you can put onto Drive. It's essentially a hard drive for you online. Now the beauty of it being online is you can use any machine to access this at any time. If your computer itself um, dies, crashes, stolen, whatever, you can still access all of your documents because you have your login details and you can log into Google from anywhere in the world from your phone, right? I've got an app on my phone, I can get into my Google Drive. Okay, so uh, if we want to, so let's say we're looking at our drive. This is where I'm going to store lots of my files. One thing that I could do is I could click the new button, and when I click the new button, I can create a new folder to put things in. I could upload a file from my current computer. I could upload a whole folder. I can create a Google Doc, a sheet, or a slide, all from this plus button over on the side over here. So um, that's pretty pretty important. That's pretty handy. That new plus there. Now, there's other ways to do things, and, and with all the programs that I'm going to show you, there's multiple ways to do things. Um, if I don't want to click this and then click File, Upload, and all that sort of stuff, and go and find the file, what I could do is I could just select a file on my computer. So I've got some case study definitions here. I'm going to just select that, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm just going to drop it wherever I want on the drive. So um, I don't want to put it into a folder, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to click it here, drag it. Oops, drag it, and I'm just going to drop it right there into my folder, and it'll copy in, right? So now if I want to find that, if I go, oh, look, here, here it is copying in, if I say, oh, where is it? I can't find it now. Either I can look down this list here, or I can actually do a search in here and put um, case, study, whatever it may be, and it should come up here, right? So case study definitions... Right, and then there it is, there's my file, I can click on it. Now, I know it's down here, I could click on it down here, and if I double click, I can view the file. Now, if I want to edit that file online, this button at the top of the screen here, open with Google Docs, will allow me to open it with Google Docs and edit that. Now, I'll show you that later, that's not what we're doing now, we're doing Drive. Okay, so you can see I can upload a file. I could also upload an image, I've got an image here called lookup.jpg, same thing, bring it in, dump it, and drag it in there. And that'll upload. Now, what if, if I wanted to do, I could have dragged that look up, and I could have put it straight into a folder, right? So I could have gone straight into the Drive Lessons folder, and now it's going to upload into that folder, okay? So, um, and you'll see it's saying look up. It's low, now, I've just uploaded it twice, but um, if I go into Drive Lessons, now I know look up is right there. Okay, so Drive is essentially a hard drive that you can store all of your information, everything you need, on your on the cloud so that you can access it from anywhere. Um, in terms of the icons, if you have a look here on the icons on the drive, see how this is just a plain black folder? That's just a file that I use. I've used it on um, the 30th of June 2017, so I haven't used that for a while. That's just a file that I use. The one with a little picture of a person there, that represents that it's shared with someone else. And in this case, this is one of the students from a couple of years ago, and that folder was shared with 
that student, so the, the two people had access to it. So that's the difference between the two icons there. Another thing that you might want to change is the look and the feel of it. If you don't like the list view of all of the different folders here, you can go up here to these four dots up here, this grid view, you click on that, and you'll notice the way it looks changes. Now I can see all the folders in a grid, I can see all the files in a grid, and I actually get a bit of a preview of what each of the files is. So if you want to do it that way, you're more than welcome to do it that way. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do um, at the school is, is fix our naming conventions. Um, what we would like to do is have the year level first, the name of the subject, the two initials of the teacher, and then the year that you're doing the files, right? And this is going to follow through into our classroom. And the classroom, in fact, is the next thing I'm going to do. Um, just before we move on to the classroom, I'll just show you this one over here as well. This is called Shared Drives. Shared Drives, instead of having one hard drive that's just yours, you can create a shared drive that you share with someone else. Um, and you can see there are several of those already here. The problem with that is that we get overwhelmed with the amount of shared drives that are on the, on the system. So we try and avoid that as much as we can. Occasionally you'll hear a teacher say um, it's on a shared drive and then they'll tell you where it is. Okay, just one last thing. I'm just going to change my view back to my list view. Um, if I want to share a folder, so let's say I want to share this drive lessons folder. I can click on that. I can control click on that and I can um, share with the share button there or I can click on it I can go up here to the little oops I just moved it accidentally no there it is I can go up here I can click on the button there and I can put the email address in of the person that I want to share with so I might want to share with this person and then I can choose whether they can organize add or edit or they can only view so I can choose how I share what preferences I share with that person if I wanted to do that I'm just going to keep, ke click cancel because I don't want to do that right now and click done and I would have shared that folder. So that's it for Drive. That's the start of Drive. Now let's get on to part two which is Classroom. Okay, I click on the nine little dots again in the top right hand corner up here um, and from there I can go to Classroom. And as I said earlier, sometimes the Classroom icon might be somewhere different, might be further down um, if you click down, but in this situation I've got my Classroom here. So. Um, I'm going to click on Classroom and you'll see my drive is still open at the top here on a separate tab and the Classroom now comes up here in Courses. Now, yours will come up, it'll probably have nothing there, it might have one, Tony shared a few classrooms with the new teachers, but to start with you may have none, right? So what we want to do is we want to create a new classroom. The classrooms. Um, uh, essentially a, a place where you can go and post work, students can come and get that work, they can talk to you, you know, the communication back and forward by messages, their homework is always stored on there, um, essentially it's a place where you upload resources and the students have those resources forever, they're, they're, they're on the classroom for the whole year or for as long as you keep the classroom running, um, it's a place where um, everything is stored for the class. So I want to create a new classroom. I'm going to click on the on the um, plus sign, and you should have join class and create class. Now I know at the moment some of the teachers are only getting join class. That's a permissions thing, and Tony's working on getting that fixed at the moment. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to create a new class. So I'm going to click create class. Now this is where the naming conventions come in, and this is very important because we're trying to do this across the whole school. Um, when you're naming a class, we need to make sure that we name it correctly. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do a year 11 class. So I'm going to call this 11. So that's the year level I'm doing. My subject, computer science. Then I put in my initials, NM. Then I put in the year that this is that we're working on. This is a 2019 slash 2020 oops 2020 school year. So the naming conventions that we're using at the school is the year of the students first, the subject, the course, the initials of the person creating it, and then the year that it's created. Now the same thing is going to apply if you're creating documents that you're going to be sharing with other people. We want to use the same sort of format. So if it's the whole school, you'll put all staff, then you'll put what the topic is, your initials, and then the date that it's being created. Okay, And that way we can track. We can track what's happening around the school. Now as this is a year 11 class, this would be my IG, one of my IGCSE classes, right? And it's the second year of their IGCSE. So in the section, 
I put in IGCSE2. So I call them IGCSE2. My year 10s would be IGCSE1, and then my IBs would be IB1 and IB2. Now, the subject, obviously, it's computer science. And in my room, I know that this year at Akinto, I'm in room 104. So I'm going to put my room in, and I can create that um, classroom straight away. Okay, now it takes a minute or so for it to come up and create. And what you'll see is a new icon. Here we go. 11, Computer Science, NM, IGCSE 2, and there's a little code here. Now, this is really important. This code that's right there, really important. We'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, now I want to add students to this classroom. So the first thing I would do is go up to the top right-hand side and I'm going to click on people. Now, the people at the moment is myself, Nicholas May as a teacher. I have to add another teacher straight away. The first person that I need to add is the IGCSE coordinator. So I'm going to add Claire Varani. So if I click, I just wrote CLA and it's automatically come up. I can click Claire Varani and Oops, let's cancel that. Do that again. Click Claire Varani. Right, and you'll see she's come up as one of the people that I'm inviting. Now, I'm inviting her as a teacher. So because I'm inviting her as a teacher, um, she will have access rights and be able to change things and edit things and all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not going to do it now because it's just for the purpose of the demonstration, but I would click Invite, and Claire would get an email saying, you're invited to Computer Science, Year 11, 2000, all that sort of stuff. So she would get that. I'm going to click Cancel. Now, the students can do this two ways. You can either click Add, and you can add all of the different student email addresses if you know them. You can write in their names. I might have a boy named Carlo. Carlo um, Kalisi, there he is. I could hit that. Oops, and then there you go, I could hit invite. So I don't even need to know their email addresses, I just need to know their names, right? So you can do it that way. The other way you can do it is remember this code. So that's what I said before about remembering the code. If you remember the code, you can invite the students. So I'm going to go back a step and show you how you would do that. I'm going to go back to Google Drive, click on the nine dots, go to Classroom. So it's just opened a new tab for me at the top here in my Classroom. Now, instead of cl clicking plus and going create a class, I would go join class and then I would paste the code in here. And that code, and that's how you could give it to the students. So you could write the code up on the board. They all know how to join a class. They'll join the classroom and they'll come in. Now, once they come in as students, they have less access rights. They can't change the look and the feel and the, the content, some of the content that's in there. They can't do that. So that's the reason that we give the students student access and the teachers teacher access. Okay, the stream at the top is actually what the students can see when they first open the classroom. So that's what happens down here. If you want to just put a comment on quickly, just to say hello, whatever it is, you can click share something with the class, write a comment in down here and click post. You'll also notice you can link it to a file on your computer, a file you've already uploaded into your, um, into your drive. You can link it to a YouTube clip or you can link it to um, a web address, a, a web link. Now, if you do the, the link to a YouTube clip, it'll actually preview the little screen on here. When they click it, it'll play, but you don't have to actually have the video. So that was, someone asked me about that um, today, that, or what happens if I want them to watch YouTube clips? You can link them here. So I would just essentially click there, put in the URL of the YouTube, or I look up whatever it is I want to do, add that, and then a little preview will come up um, on the screen here. That's if I wanted to do a post that way. Now that's a post where I just want to talk to the kids, I just want to send them a bit of information. However, for proper classwork that you want stored and kept over a long period of time, we have to follow this process. You go to classwork at the top. You click create, and you create the topic of the classwork first. So I might right click on here and say, my topic's going to be homework. So that's one of my categories that I'm going to add. I'm also doing computer science, so I'm going to create another topic, and my topic can be Python, which is the programming language we do at our school. So I'm going to put that in there as well. So I've got my two topics here, Python and, and homework. Now, obviously, over the course of the year, you're going to have 10, 15 topics, depending on the chapters in your book, whatever, however you're teaching your coursework from your IB um, or your IGCSE. 
Right, so now I want to put content in here. I can click create and I can create an assignment, a quiz, a questionnaire, material, or I can reuse an old post. So I'm going to put an assignment in here. I'm going to call my assignment, um, I'm going to call my assignment homework week one. Um, and I'm going to call it case study definitions. Okay. So there's the title of my homework. Then I'm going to give the instructions. Um, open the doc folder. I'm going to make a copy and define find all definitions. Um, share. Um, your final answer with me. Okay, so I've given them some simple instructions. I want to go down and I want to attach a file from my drive, which I know I put there earlier on my drive. I put case study definitions. Okay, there it is, case study definitions. So I've now I've attached this file. They've got a preview of it. They can see it's a doc. It's a Word document, they, they have access to it, so I've attached that. I need to make sure, this is really important, that in the topic, I choose the correct topic now. I'm going to choose homework as the topic. So I've done that, and I can hit assign. Now, under homework, you can see I've now got homework here. Now, the Python's above that, and I, the Python's not really what we're doing at the moment. So I might want to click this homework, drag it up, and put it above that, because that's now my priority, is the homework over putting up some Python stuff, which we might do later. So all of these things are uh, manipul able to be manipulated. You can change them. You can change the look, the feel, all that sort of stuff. This is how we set up the classroom. When we go to stream, you'll see here I have posted some homework. It doesn't give me a massive amount of information, it just says that there's some homework there. So the students know that they need to go into that and click on that to do that. Now I'm going to show you a previous one from, oh wait, one more thing, sorry, quickly, is you can edit the look and the feel, you can change the themes, you can change whatever you want, the look and the feel to suit you, okay? That's more of the design side of it, it's got nothing to do with your teaching, that's up to you if you want to do that. Now I'm just going to show you some other courses I've got from previous years, just so you can see how things may look. Okay, so let's go with, yeah, let's go with Year 12 Computer Science from last year. You can see, here's an example. Here's their summer homework that I gave them. There's a video tutorial on what they have to do. It's not much writing. The video actually speaks for itself. Here's the case study. Here's some other stuff. And you can see, as they scroll down, there's lots of information here. And this, this might be six months' worth of work or a year's worth of work. This is the way that we use the classrooms um, for the students. If we see if we can find another one here, um, let's go with oh, year 13. Now you'll notice on this year 13 one, um, I did this with the, the kids. This is actually my current um, group of kids. I've made a mistake in the heading, I'll have to fix that. Um, but you can see down this side, all of my topics are here. So the students can just go for a quick reference. They can go, right, I need to know about databases today. They click on databases and it'll take them to whatever we've been doing in databases. There are files attached, there are um, videos, there's tutorials, all that sort of stuff. So it's really important that we work using the topics the right way. Okay, so that's about it for Classroom. You know how to create it. The students know how to get on. I've shown you how to put work up online if you need to put things online. Um, how to create posts for the students. You know how to use um, the, your drive. If you've got any questions, you come and speak to me or Tony and we will help you out and give you some more um, assistance or direct you in the right sort of way to find the help that you need.